got all the voting. I swear to God, I've been at it for a minute. Climbing to the top, and this music was my ticket. Found a way to grind, turn a passion to a business. Hey guys, it's Andy Elliott. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Today, I'm here with my man, Ryan Pineda. I know you guys know who he is. If you don't, you'll know right now. Um, number one, he's a massive influencer in the space, but he's not just an influencer. He's got a big business. Dude, his story is crazy. You know, I always talk about adversity, you know, overcoming stuff, you know, how people like want to go do big stuff, but everybody's always like, you know, you got to get lucky. You don't have to get lucky. And the cool thing is, and I'm going to kind of let him, you know, rip here um, and share some of his knowledge and like how is what his story is and how he leveled up and stuff and how his life changes. But we're in an era right now. At the time we're shooting this, it's 2024, February. And like, dude, anybody in the world right now can get information. And then it's just, what do you do with it, right? Every, every, I think every quarter you're doing the Wealth Con. Yep, is that yep, right? Yep. Every quarter he does this big event. It's called Wealth Con. There's a couple thousand people there and it just keeps getting bigger. And the, literally for two days, they share how to become successful and how to win. Um, when I was younger, I'm 44. When I was younger, you didn't get that. They didn't have, you know, that cassette tapes, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and you could try to or read a book or something. But now you can totally immerse like into a live event for one or two days and you can literally walk out of there a different person and you can take in 20 years of information yeah like it's the cheat code it's the life hack you know so we're in an era right now where if anybody is like not getting what they want it's just because you don't want it if you wanted a six-pack you'd have it um, this is an era right now where all the information is everywhere and honestly I'm obsessed with it I, I, I fell in love with learning I love it I learn everything from him I study him I watch him he's out here today at, uh, in Scottsdale yeah. Arizona at our place he's studying our operations and how we do it we're a brotherhood we just take care of each other we always try to help each other you know learn each other's businesses better so we can go home and make our own businesses better and we try to figure out how to fix our own holes um, um, because like that's the the, the key is to just so problem solve because we can't solve anybody else's problems if we don't solve our own so every day we're always trying to solve our own problems and that actually helps us help ourselves and help more people so ryan uh rip i know you got a cool <laughs> story yeah um, i i want you to tell it i mean i've i know everybody has heard it on your channel but i think a lot of our people like i want to make sure they know who you are and it's actually super cool and then and tell them a little bit about what you do and yeah thank you for being here yeah no first off i just want to say thanks for having us man because i remember you came to one of my events before you know they were wealth con and at the size they're at today and brad introduced us and he's like hey you got to meet my friend andy dude this dude is about to blow up he's killing it already people just don't know yet and i was like all right and you know we met uh you came to my office a couple of yeah. years ago uh you brought the twins and all yeah. the chaos i was like dang dude these guys are crazy man i was like wait until like you start just getting on social media and showing what you're doing and then to see two years later like the growth has been insane, but we were just talking about it today. Like it's not that you're doing anything different. It's just that it compounds time yeah. after time. So, yeah. um, I'm just honored to be here. Cause I've, you know, as I rebuild my operation and sales team for the next level, I'm like, let me see who's doing it the right way. And I literally just spent the last couple of hours just picking the brains of, you know, your wife, your sales team, you, um, the marketing team and everybody is just so into the cult like it's not a front it's not a front of like oh we just do this and that like it's dude these guys are doing it every day thank you so i want everyone to know that first and foremost what, what, did, you th <laughs> what did you think about the the culture by the way well i love it dude i mean you see that you have this culture of everybody wants to serve everybody has the same tenacity um literally everyone i walk by offered me a water or a coffee everyone gives you a hug everybody's smiling everybody's um, you know, trying to build their brands. Everybody's trying to close deals. Everybody is, you know, focused on the mission. Like there is pure, just focus. Everybody is going the same way. Yeah. The mission. Yeah. They're going the same way. Good. So it's well, not fake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good. I'm glad you're out here. And like I said, you know, a couple of years ago I started with them and, uh, I want you to tell your story because like I, I started to see how you got in real estate. Yeah. Right. And then I remember one time I was watching on YouTube and I kept got started with one. And then I went through the other ones and I was seeing how you kind of built. Can you tell your story of like entrepreneurship? Yeah. So I never wanted to be an entrepreneur, man. I, um, all I wanted to do was play baseball. And so I was fortunate enough to be very good, um, at a young age and I got drafted by the Oakland A's and ended up playing eight years in the minor leagues. And so 
you know, a lot of people don't know in the minor leagues you make no money. I was making literally six, seven thousand dollars a year, not a so month, crazy. a year. Guys, Andy Elliott, listen, if you're interested in real estate investing, I've got the Hustle Summit. It's going to be June 1st. It's going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona. You guys know where I live. Now, this event is going to be one day. It's going to be super simple. I've got a boy in mind. His name's Eric Klein. He's built about four eight-figure businesses, and right now, he's teaching people how to do wholesale real estate and make 100 grand a month. You guys just text the number below to get your information on the tickets. I'd love to get close to you. I will be here. I'll meet all of you. I'll be speaking to you. Text the number below. I'll get you the information. Let's kill it. And so I got forced into entrepreneurship because mm -hmm. I had to hustle on the side to pursue my dream. And so, you know, I became a realtor in 2010. So, man, I've been in real estate for 15 years now almost. Yeah. And it was terrible back in 2010. Great time to buy if you were buying real estate, but nobody was buying back then. Mm -hmm. They were all scared. So, you know, I couldn't cut it as an agent. I didn't realize being a realtor was all about sales at that time. Mm -hmm. Like, I just did not want to sell people. I'm like, dude, why doesn't people just use me to buy their house? I don't get it. <laughs> um, but you know, you're 21, you don't know any better. And back then there was no Instagram. There was no Andy Elliott yeah. yelling at you, telling you to get hyped yeah. and sell. It was a different era. Yeah. Like you just don't know back then. And so eventually I ended up quitting real estate. Um, hated it. Started doing other hustles. Dude, I was hustling anything you could imagine. I was flipping furniture, flipping couches, yeah, flipping tell cell us, phones. What are some of the hustles you did? Like, um, like because I mean, a lot of people hustle a bunch of different stuff, but then now you got this big life. Like yeah. I want people to know like the hustle this is to all get gonna there. go somewhere. Yeah, dude, it's funny. We were just on the airport arriving here and a guy goes, Dude, are you Ryan Pineda? I was like, Yeah. He goes, I started flipping couches because of you. See? There you go. Then that's happened a lot at the airports. And so So, so, so you started flipping furniture? Yep. So that was my first buy like on Craigslist or something or Bro, I would just everywhere. Yeah. I well, this is how it happened. I got married young and so we had no money. And I bought all our furniture on Craigslist. Mm. And I remember it was like a thousand bucks, furnished the whole place. And I was like, man, I got some good deals. I bet you I could sell this stuff right now for a couple thousand more. Yeah. I was like, why don't I just do that? Because it was easy. It took me a couple of days to furnish it. Yeah. So I went and bought a couch, relisted it, sold it, made a couple hundred bucks. I was like, dude, if I just buy one of these a day, that's yeah, like six, six thousand a month, six, seven thousand a month. And so. You know, I just tested it and it worked. I was like, wow, That's like so cool. this is good money. And it taught you how to hunt, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, everything was a hunt. Yeah. I was going to say like, guys, understand this. There's fisher, there's fishermen that sit on their ass and wait for something to bite. Mm -hmm. And then there's hunters. Yeah. The reason why you're successful now is because you hate to lose. Obviously mm -hmm. you're in sports, so you're competitive. And I think having a competitive edge is like extremely important. But also you're a hunter. Mm -hmm. Like, and you proved it in your furniture state. You're still a hunter. Never forget that. But you're a hunter. Yep. You love hunting. Yep. And this is the game of hunting. Yeah. It really is. It is. And, you know, eventually I got back into real estate about five years after um, 2010. You know, in 2015, I realized I could actually flip houses and I didn't need money to do it. Um so I ended up maxing out my credit cards to, to get a down payment. Mm -hmm. And I got a super high interest loan and bought my first deal. And thankfully, you know, everything went well, made 25 grand on that first flip. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. But to your point, I was just hunting deals left and right. I was on the MLS on the market, looking for deals, making offers. I was networking, trying to go build relationships to get people to send me deals. I was trying to go raise money. Like I was always out there hunting trying to go get deals and leads. And then, you know, one deal turned into two, two turned into five. You know, I went from five flips to 20 flips to 50 flips to my fourth year, I did 150 flips. Wow. And this, the, these aren't like just closing deals. This is buying a property, like finding a deal, negotiating it, raising money, buying it, finding contractors, negotiating, getting it fixed, listing it, negotiating again, and then selling it and making a profit. Like not many people can do yeah. all of those things. Yeah. You, you mastered it. Yeah. Well, I didn't know any other way to make money. <laughs> well, well, so I'm going to tell a lot of people why I think number one, I want you to just pick up right where you're at. But if you're watching this, a lot of people, the reason why they don't make it, all those calls, all those offers, all those things, people stop somewhere along the way and they don't keep pushing through. You made it to 20 flips, to 50 flips, to 100, to 125. Dude, most people in any industry, they just quit when that hard work's going in. Winnings come, Tim Grover says winning comes with a price. Yep. And you were paying the price 
And dude, the results didn't come always as fast as you wanted them, mm -hmm. but you kept paying that price on a daily basis. As a salesperson, I know that I'm gonna keep calling and I may, I may make 290 calls and I know 10 of them are gonna pay off. Yeah. So the 280 that don't mm -hmm. is the price. Well, and most people aren't willing to make that many calls, number one. Number two, you know, let's say 60, 70% don't even pick up, you know? Then you get rejected the other ones that do and then you know it's just like somebody turned down an offer yeah 99 percent don't work or somebody accepting it and then it falling through yeah. like you had to go through a lot of that shit, right all the time um so you crush it in in the flipping space yep. right and and tell us what what like what's going on now like what does these last like couple years look like like what does your business entail yeah so like, you know how you help people and stuff like that yep so we ended up doing really well with flipping and then a lot of people started to say dude can you teach me can you mentor me mm. and at that point i didn't want to be a guru i didn't want to do social media stuff and it wasn't until covid that i actually embraced mm. it because i had been asked it for a long time and during covid i just started making content dude i just felt like that was the next wave of opportunity and it wasn't even about coaching it was just more so like i understand that social media is going to be really important in this next decade mm -hmm. let me get at the forefront yeah you're you're an early adopter you did good man thank you and you're good at marketing Thank you. You'll flip your hair different, colors, which, <laughs> yeah. which I think is cool. But you'll you're good at marketing, mm -hmm. and you're a good speaker. You're confident. Um, you're just you're smooth. You know you believe mm -hmm. in yourself a lot. Yeah. Everything that you say, you can tell you've researched really well, mm -hmm. or like you've lived it. You're an applicant teacher of it. Yeah. Right. Which is cool because a lot of people they're out there making content. I want everybody to understand this. This is a business owner. You're a business owner. You found that making content would feed into your business. Yep. You accidentally became an influencer. Mm -hmm. You love it now because you help people and they say, oh my God, you changed my life. I started flipping couches because of you. Yeah. Just give an example. Or you, now you teach me how to be great at real estate. Or now, you, you know, you, just everything happened, but it didn't happen for that way. But, but you learn, because you're a leader, you learn that, man, like I can be influential on this uh, platform and be a leader and I can help a lot of other people even directly outside of my business. Yeah. Right? It's just a way to scale yourself, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, and your accountability is big. Yeah. So I ended up, uh, you know, just going all in during COVID. It ended up working out great. And from that, the education business started to take off too. And so that led to teaching people how to flip houses. That led to teaching people how to create content, to build their business, to become better marketers. And, you know, that ended up leading to throwing events. Like, dude, I never thought I was going to throw big events. Like, that was never part of the plan. Isn't that crazy? You know? And it's just like every quarter that something new happens. And then this new event. And we're doing retreats and all this fun stuff. And it was never part of the plan. Yeah. You, well, you just learned. Uh, here's what you learn. You learn that the closer that people can get to you, the more value that they can get out of you. Mm. The more closer people can get to you, the more that they can really honestly – not that they learn any additional information than they would learn from a wealth con event, but if I go on a retreat with you, I can really see how you live. Yeah. And to me, I think that's called human excellence. And I would tell you, if you were to say, hey, I'll pay you, I'll, Andy, I got two deals. Uh, five grand, go to my wealth con event. Yeah. You can buy a ticket, just whatever it costs. And I'd be like, okay, we're going to talk to you for two days and we're going to tell you what you need to do. I'm buying that ticket. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, for 25 more grand, you can come spend three days with me. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? I'll pay a hundred grand because the time that I can watch you operate as a human being, that time I can see how you interact with your wife, how you interact with your kids, how you order your food, how you breathe, what you do when you're resting, how much time you're on your phone. I watch all that mm -hmm. and it gives me an opportunity to truly see how you live and also really learn who you are. And dude, like to me, that's priceless, man. Oh yeah. Really getting to know somebody, there's no dollar amount that you can put on it. So anybody that finds a mentor, whatever it costs to get close to them, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. It is priceless. And, and during those times is where it really tr sh truly shows you how to live and creates a good personal life. And then the business that you teach, like at WealthCon, that shows me the business side. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I'll say that, you know, I think when you're first starting out, right? You probably, a lot of people don't have a lot of money, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, hey man, you really need 
the right information, you need accountability, you need training, you need all those things. And then I think at the next level, what you're talking about is access, right? Yeah. You know, because like somebody just getting started, I mean, look, they might have 30 grand, which is all good, but, yeah, but totally. get it, get in the door with the, the, the hundred couple hundred dollar thing or the thousand dollar thing. Yes. Anybody can go get a thousand bucks. Right. Yeah. I tell people all the time, dude, those rooms that you create, like at WealthCon, we create our master closer seminars or different events, anyone's event. If they're good people, you look up to them, you believe their heart's in the right place. I always, like Bradley always says, find someone, you know, who's been where you want to go and just go learn from them if mm -hmm. you can. And the closer you can get to them, the better. You walk into one of these events one way and you leave completely different another way. Yeah. And then it took you, what, 15, 20 years to learn all this? Yeah. And you're teaching it? Yeah. In one day? Yep. Come crazy. on, man. Yeah, that's crazy. People it, can accelerate it so much faster. Yeah. How long you been in sales? Yeah, I've been in sales since I was 18. <laughs> yeah. So, like, when I'm teaching somebody, dude, I mean, I've been doing it 25 years. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, the way that I teach people, I see, you have your own system. You yeah. have your own philosophy, your own ideology, right? You know, not about God, but about, like, how you teach people, mm -hmm. right? Yep. People always want to learn from different people. I believe, like, their ideology of how they believe to make people great. I believe that physically getting fit is the fastest way to become the greatest at sales. Mm. And everybody's like, oh, this guy. You know, <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 because it shows me when you, you take your shirt off, you'll notice we have a lot of people take their shirts off a lot, is because I want you to see your discipline edge, mm. your discipline blade. I want you to see how sharp it is. I want you to look at yourself. When you're getting dressed in the morning, do you look in the, morning, in the mirror and you're like, dude, I'm a badass. Or you're like, dude, I want to cover up. Yeah. Like, dude, like when you're trying to cover up, there's two rules to business that I believe. Rule number one, don't ever let anybody else know your business better than you. So like be the best at whatever your niche is and get the greatest at it. Rule number two, try to figure out how to kick your own ass every single day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are your holes? Well, to me, a hole like physical fitness, like the way you take care of yourself, no one else is going to let you take care of them if you can't take care of yourself. Right. Number two, you're not going to make the calls all day long and have the confidence and make sales and grow a business. And hell... Dude, if you're a leader, you're not going to lead a team and they're not going to follow you if you don't look like somebody worth following. I was telling you, like, you've put on some muscle and you've got yeah. a shirt on right now, so I'm not going to make you take your shirt off. Let's take, <laughs> take, take your shirts off. But yeah. It's like, it's like um, but like, you know, like you've put a lot of muscle on. Like, I notice yeah. as you're talking and stuff, like, I'm like, dude, look at Ryan's biceps. <laughs> we're getting big, you know, but how do you feel since you've put some more muscle on? Yeah, no, 100%. I feel great, dude. You know, and it's funny, right? Do you have more confidence now, now that your 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 body's changing and uh, Yeah, dude, I got I got more muscle. I got a beard now, dude. It's yeah. a, we're ready to go. But but <laughs> so what I just said is why I make people start with that, my ideology. Mhm. Mm Teach them a word track. Teach them what to say on the phone. But if they don't believe in themselves, what does it matter? Yeah. The deal is, is they're not going to help anybody and nobody's going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. Well, and that's the first thing before anything, whether it's sales or real estate or content, right? What's the biggest fear people have with making content? People they're judging ju People judging them, how they look, how they speak, like all those things. Yeah. And so it always starts mentally first because even with real estate, right? With sales you know, there's not a ton of risk. It's just like, yo, get out there and start talking to people mm -hmm. with real estate. It's like, yo, what if I buy a bad deal? Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments. Tell me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Like I might invest Scary. and lose a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I get it. But it starts here first before anything. If you can't get over the mental hurdle, you ain't never going to buy a property. You know, we tell people this all the time, right? You know, we got a bunch of different coaching programs. And it's like, okay, you know, we're like, hey, this is a $3,000 program. Mm -hmm. Like, this is these are all the things you get. I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. It's a lot of money. I'm like, if you think 3000 is a lot of money, how are you going to go get 300000 to buy this deal? Well, if you think that bill's big, wait till you get the bill of not becoming successful. The bill for regret, right. yep. And, and I want to say something. Uh, this is important. And I want to tell anybody right now, uh, Ryan Pineda, just so anybody, if you don't know who he is, um, how can they find you on Instagram? Yeah, just Ryan Pineda um, on Instagram, YouTube, everything, man. Yeah. And just everywhere. It's Ryan Pineda. Ryan Pineda everywhere. And if know. people want to coach with you, do they DM you? Yep. Just hit me up on IG and we'll hit you up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want you to understand this. The goal in business, and I know that Ryan was talking about like making a bad deal and all this, is to have the lowest risk with the highest upside. Yeah. Right? Like, like 
business's number one goal is to not lose money. Like, that's the goal. Like, I, I hear people that say, oh, we're losing money. I'm like, that's a bad business. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> like, don't do that. Um, so I treat my life as a business. And uh, I want to tell you this. The greatest investment that you've ever made is self-developing in yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going outside of real estate here. We're going, you're going outside of making money. How do people get rich? How do people get successful? How do people make money? It's very simple. They out-self-develop everyone. They out self develop where they would have ever gone and they learn all this new information. They get around these new people. They get around these new experiences and truly they literally alter their identity. They become a different person. They, they learn all this new skill and they become rich. Yeah. And so the secret, the secret is to take any amount of money that you have. This is not a sell and go invest it in yourself. And the return will be a thousand percent every time, whether it's a gym pass, whether it's a coaching with Ryan, whether it's anything, just your entertainment budget, right? In most cases is higher than your education budget. If you really want a big life, go look at your bank account and you can see where you're spending your money. If you went to the mall and, and blew 500 bucks, I'm like, dude, you shouldn't have spent that 500 bucks. You should have bought a, a coaching program. Yeah. And people are like, oh, you're trying to sell me. No, dude, you're settling. Yeah, I don't care if you buy any of our stuff. You should be buying you, into Yourself, you. Yeah. Into you. Yeah, it, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You are who you are because you learned how to find out what everybody was doing. Okay, like you come in here today. Exactly. Right. I know you have to go home with a couple ideas that could be a million-dollar idea. It could be a $10 million idea. It could be a $100 million idea. It could be a billion-dollar idea. And you're going to use it in your own way, but you saw something today in our company that's going to allow you to go back home and do this big thing in your company. 100%. And I, when I go to your office, I see something that I'm like, okay. When I buy a coaching program, right? Dude, this is crazy. In 2018, I bought a coaching program. It was my first coaching program. So, like, everybody remembers their first time that, they spent That was money. when I bought my first one, too. Just Isn't so you know. crazy, man? Yep. I bought uh, Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi, Russell's Brunson's yep. uh, Broker Blueprint. It was how to take whatever skill you have and then and then reteach it. Mm. And I was like, I'm not worthy of like being a speaker or I just I'm good at sales. And they go, No, 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 no. There's people that aren't good at sales and you can teach them by doing an event. I spent three grand on this course. I was scared to death. Yeah, yeah. Thank God there was a money back guarantee on it or I wouldn't <laughs> have used it. I mean, that's how big of a coward I was. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm gonna tell something I've never told anyone before in my life. And because I want you people to know, like, you have to grow out of these weak ass stages, mm. right? You have to grow out of this scarcity and, and you have to have abundance. I bought this course. I knew there was a money back guarantee. It was only three grand, but I knew when it was done before the 30 days was up, I was going to get my money back. Mm. That's how big of a loser I was. Mm. This is 2018. I mean, this is, I'm not proud of this guy. Yeah, it's not that long this ago. Is, this yeah. is before I, I changed my life, but I had this shitty ass mindset. My wife is so cool, dude. I'm sitting here and it's like on the 28th day. I've watched <laughs> this thing like 19 times, right? And I go, babe, how do I get my money back on this thing? And she goes, did you learn? <laughs> By I doing said, it? <laughs> and I said, oh yeah. I said, I learned so much, man. I'm going to kill it. And she goes, is that what you want? Do you want everybody to come to your event or whatever you're going to do? And then after you train them, you want them to refund? I said, no, she's like, we don't do that. We're not shitty people. Mm. You're not getting your money back. That's, sh that's thinking is what will keep us out of business. And dude, she just, it was just low limiting beliefs, not having an abundance mindset, not self-developing enough and just being a loser, you know? And I, I grew, I was like, oh my God. So that was a lesson. I learned it right then. From that day forward, I was like, dude, I never will ask for a refund for anything. Mm. I'm not a piece of shit. I'm not, I had to be taught, right? So like when you teach people, you think this is common sense, but dude, someone taught me in my past to take advantage of or get what you can or do yeah. whatever. Like, dude, I was a piece of shit, man. And I'm okay to tell people I'm not a piece of shit no more. But yeah. I wanted to tell people like, dude, like own your shit. Like I just owned that I had a weak ass mindset, that I was being a loser. But I took that course. And um, the next day I did a, a post on YouTube and I said, I'm doing this event. 
It's 997 Master Closer Seminar, and I'll teach you how to close anybody in the automotive industry because it was an automotive uh, was my main niche back yeah. then. And um, I had 30 people reach out. Yeah. So made thirty thousand dollars. Did a one day event. Everybody loved it. This is you know four four years ago, mm -hmm. and I'm like, dude, that three grand made me thirty grand. I'm gonna be honest with you, that three grand that I spent probably made me fifty million. Crazy. I mean, easily just that one course. Mm. So I will tell every single one of you, buy everything he has, mm. buy everything that I have, buy everything that you can buy from anyone you look up to mm. and study them and learn it and get it all Yeah, and have the abundance mindset. And dude, like, I'm just telling you, like, I, I honestly just can't believe, uh, well, number one, how far you've come, how far I've come, how far these people can go. Yeah. Um, you know, when you, t when you coach people, right, you have people that were your students Yeah. and they're really wealthy now they're doing good. They got great lives and they're killing it. All those people had to take a risk at some point and do something. And when it starts out, it starts by maxing a credit card out, flipping some couches, yep. you know, and by the way, when you're flipping couches, I mean, you know, like, you know, you meet people and they're like, you flip couches, <laughs> like they, they, they judge you. You have to realize this when you're on this journey, you have to realize you cannot care what anyone thinks about you. Right. Can you talk about that? I mean, yeah, listen, cause I want everybody to know this. I get made fun of all the time. Yeah. Okay. Short shorts, I love it, dude. <laughs> but like people will make fun of you because of your hair. Yep. They'll do different things. How do you how do you handle that? Because like like I know this, like if you if you say something about me, like and I stopped you, like I own you, dude. Mm. Like I own you. Yeah. Like, dude, I stopped you. Mm -hmm. Shit. I own you, bro. Yeah. You know, that's how I think. Yeah. But like in the beginning, it's hard because even my wife, when I started trying to build her social media, which that's our next goal is to build her up because she's truly yeah. our owner or CEO of the Elliott group and yeah. I put her on the back burner and people don't know it. So now I'm trying to build it. Somebody will say something like, Oh, she's, she's a dude because she's in good shape. Oh, yeah. look at, Oh, there's two guys hanging out and mm. it'll be me and her together. Yeah. And she's like, Oh man, you know, I needed to delete that. And I'm like, screw that guy, babe. Yeah. You know, like, dude, don't that dude, he hates himself. Yeah. Right. Can we talk about that for just a minute? Yeah, dude. So it's tough, man, because obviously nobody wants to be disliked. Because everybody nobody if wants they get to a be big hated. Life, they're going to go through this. Oh, 100%. And I was talking to the team on Monday about this. I was like, look, guys, we're going to, we're like going into this next phase where we're going to have more hate than ever. And that's Good. just part of it, right? I love it. The more people you help, the bigger you get inevitably more haters come and it's not even that more haters come i mean when you think about it right if you were only helping a hundred people before and you had a couple of people that didn't like you okay two percent one percent of people don't like me whatever well but dude when you're helping millions of people well mistake. now there's tens of thousands of people who don't like you yeah like that it's, it's the same ratio yeah it's just there's way more of them out there and the thing is with social media the people that got nothing going on, the losers, they're the ones commenting and talking and all. Like, dude, successful people are usually out out doing successful things, right? Like, yeah. we don't have time to go hate on other stuff. The other part is, too, dude, if you got time to go write things and everything else, I'm probably in your mind just swimming, running laps. Mm, like, yeah. so you already do own them, mm -hmm. whether they realize it or not. Yeah. Right? It's I like, dude. That. I haven't thought about you once. Yeah. <laughs> You're thinking about me like all the time. Yeah, that's true. So, so, so yeah. that's a, that's a good piece of advice as you try to go to new levels. Hey, can I ask you another question? Yeah. Since you have become successful, do you feel like that the new people that meet you in your life uh, support you more than your friends growing up? Oh, way more. Did when you started? Can you talk yeah, about way that? More. Like, well, you like know, they may not get support when well, you're going for this big life. Well, let's talk about this because right now I basically have, <laughs> at this point, two types of friends. Yeah. So you have people like you mm -hmm. who, dude, I mean, we're, we're doing the same things. There's not many of us that can relate to each other of like, mm -hmm. yo, dude, it's tough being the face, the, the owner. You got to nobody deals with the hate that we got to deal with and leading this many people. So it's like, it's very few and far between. And then, you know, your other friends end up becoming all the people that you're helping at your events, your students, the, yeah. the, your clients and everything. And you were talking about access like the other day. Family. Yeah. And you were talking about access just now. And it made me think, I was like, yeah, this makes sense because I asked you 
while you're here, I was like, how do you find all these guys? And you're like, they have to start in the program first. Mm -hmm. They got to show up, pay up, show me they're committed. I want to see how they act. They need to believe in you yeah. a lot. Yeah, if they believe in you, they're going to do it by paying you. Mm -hmm. And then those are the best people, right? Yeah, they're your mentor. Yeah, and I was thinking about, and I've always said this. I was like, dude, a lot of people in my company, they started in my program. You know, I brought um, four people with me today. They all have paid me a lot of money, and now they're all working with me in different ways as either partners or just in lots of things. And so it's like, yeah, that ends up being how you find those, like your new friends. Yeah, they're your, cho they're, they're your chosen family. They've chose you to, to they want to be in your family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They've self-selected and like, they self-selected in a real way. Yeah. You know? Well, that's how things start, is that if you're interested in something, you'll pay to get there. Yeah. And then that's how it, you know, things work out. Mm -hmm. Um, so you got your wife, how many kids do you have? Three kids now. Um, how old are you? I'm 34. How old and how old are your kids? Um, five, three and six months. What is your wife like? So it's interesting. My wife has always been behind the scenes. And mm -hmm. so we've been married over 10 years now and I, we got married when we were broke. We didn't have anything. And mm -hmm. she supported every crazy entrepreneur endeavor I've ever had. Mm -hmm. She supported me when I was playing baseball, to flipping that first house, to flipping couches, to being on social media, to now doing all these things we're doing, um, whether it's in the faith side of things or the business side of things. And um, she's great. And I think she's evolved over the last 10 years. Yeah. I mean, she went from being a middle school teacher in a low income area that didn't even, you know, most of the people didn't even speak English to now being a great mom, a great wife. And now she's even starting to step out on stage and everything and on social media because she's feeling called and she's having all these women reach out to her like, you know, I don't know what to do. You know, my husband it's is a super important side. Yeah. He's a business owner. And the way that you support Ryan, that's what I want. I want to be a better wife. I want our family to look like your family. How do you guys do it? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, babe, you're the only one who has the authority and the ability to speak on it. No one else can. Yeah. Like you're you only, built it with you. me. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, what is your wife's greatest gift? What do you think? What is she good at? Oh man. Like I know she's good at a lot. Obviously she's, yeah. You know, she's your best friend, your business partner. You know, she does like, yeah. You know, raises your kids. She's your wife. Yeah. Workout partner. I mean, all, I mean, anything and everything you guys do together, but like, yeah, she got a really good intuition. Like what is she, what is, what is her strongest strength? I would say, you know, faith slash confidence is her biggest thing, you know, That's because good. no matter what stage we were ever in, we always had complete faith that it was going to be good no matter what. Right. Mm -hmm. Even when we were broke, I'm like, I think I'm gonna flip these couches. It might work. She's like, I think you're right. Like, let's go. Flipping houses. You know, we maxed our credit cards. It was hers and mine, you know, mm -hmm. having she faith. Goes, she goes all in with you. Yeah. I mean, she has faith in me. She has faith in God. She has faith in the vision and where we're going. And so, like. Have you I, always done a good job including her and everything? Making sure. Yeah. Well, I'll say this. Like, like on the journey. In, in one regard, when we first got started, it was like, we're just going to play baseball. And so she would come with me and travel and she loved it. Even though we were making money, just traveling the country, playing baseball mm -hmm. was amazing. Um, but she's always been supportive of everything. So when I was like, hey, I want to flip houses, she's like, all right, great. Let me design some. And like she was always there for the start of different things. So she did a, f a couple of houses and she's like, all right, this isn't fun anymore. Like the way you want to do it. Because yeah. I'm like, all right, great systems let's just okay they're all gonna look the exact same now she's like well that takes the fun out of it like yeah the creativity is she a creator yeah she's cre super creative good designer yeah all those things and i'm like well we can't do that on these like we need a system and so she's like all right well you do that and let me know when you need me again and then like i'm like going to social media she edited my first bunch of youtube videos because awesome. she was creative with editing and she understood youtube and after i was like all right i want to do like five videos a week. She's like, I'm not editing five videos a week. Like <laughs> you sound like me, dude. Yeah. You're obsessed. You're psycho. Yeah. Once you start seeing something works. Yep. Every time I see something works, I want a hundred of them. Yep. All right. Well, a thousand. Of them. All right. It did it once. Let's do, let, let's go all in. I've seen enough. Yeah. And my wife's like, can't we just move slow? I'm like, Big <laughs> speed is power. And, and listen, it is power. Yeah. It, it, but I have, I bulldoze my way into things mm -hmm. and then she's methodical. 
Yeah. You know, so her intuition is, is, but, but I break stuff and then she fixes it. The good thing. Yeah. The good thing with my wife is she has always, I would say, helped me see the big picture of everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's, you know, as entrepreneurs, it's easy to get just so laser focused on whatever it is we're building that we lose sight of the everything else. We're just tunnel vision. And she has always been there to say, Hey, you know, remember we got date night tonight. Hey, remember like your kids. Hey, remember, you know, you, you've been out of town the last however many weekends doing these. That's great, but it always has a cost. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a wife that checks you, it's tough, right? Because yeah. a lot of these guys, maybe they have this complex where they feel superior, like, oh, well, I'm bringing all the money. I can do whatever I want. That's and that's not, not really, no. uh, that ain't what you want. Yeah, that's why I've always liked you. I'm gonna, and I want to say this, and, and this would be a good, a good one to kind of tie in at the ending here. My wife is super direct with me. Mm -hmm. She tells me the truth. Uh, she tells me everything that I don't want to hear, but I need to hear. Yeah. Um, my wife, one time I was, uh, we were doing really good. We're making more money than we ever made. Everything's going perfect. And she grabs me and she goes, you're about to lose it all. Mm. And I'm like, what's your problem? And she goes, this is not about you. This has never been about you. This is about the people that we serve. You're, you're getting big headed. I see you losing your way. And I'm like, babe, what's your deal? And she's like, this is it. Your watch. You're, you're going to remember I told you this. You better come back down here to the, to, to the ground level. You're a soldier on the front line. People love seeing you a soldier on the front line. They love seeing how much you care. They love seeing your heart. Mm -hmm. This new guy getting all crazy, doing all this stuff. I, I, I love that. Stay who you are. Okay? She's like, Andy, like I see people as they start to come up, they lose everything. Yeah. Because they lose their perspective. She's like, I'm counting on you as my husband to lead me, right? I'm counting on you as our children's, you know, father to be a great parent, be their hero. Yeah. Make sure that you are interested in what they're interested in. They don't just need to be interested in what you're interested in. You need to make sure you're showing them special stuff. The team, they need you. Okay, this is not about you. We would be nothing without our team. Never forget that team out there. That's the reason why we're here. Mm -hmm. We were nothing on our own. She just brings it all full circle for me. And I literally just am like, damn, babe. I'm like, <laughs> and she's like, no, no, no. She's like, I love you and I'm proud of you. And I'm glad that you're hungry and you're all this. But I just need to warn you when I see these cycles coming around. And I don't want you to go into these cycles that most people fall into. And it's yeah. my job to protect you because I love you. It's my job to protect you. But also it's my job to make sure that you're becoming who you always wanted to become. You're a godly man. I'm a godly man. We're not perfect. We both love God. The foundation of me in your life is on God. Mm -hmm. It is always God. I call it, you know, God. And then like it's like physical, mental business. My family is involved in the God part. So God and family all tie right there and together. Mm -hmm. And then it's physical, mental business, right? Like mm. I'm physically fit, I'm mentally strong and business just blows up. But God is number one. And then, then it's my family. And like my wife, the reason why I'm so direct with people is she just tells me the truth and she doesn't, she doesn't want to hurt me, Yeah. but she sometimes needs to hurt me mm. to just catch my attention. So I can be like, okay, wait a minute. My wife understands me so good she can snap me out of a problem quick. Right. So when you said that your wife is a direct, yeah, I love that man. Yeah, she's never willing. She she won't hide. She's very much like yours. She right? won't budge on her standards. No, we and she has extremely high standards for me. And I'll tell you this, like, you know, when things are good, you know, things are good. And if things are tough in business, then you're like, man, I'm putting in more hours and doing this. And then, you know, it's like, well, I understand, but also too you still have the same standard to be a great dad and a great, yeah. like that didn't go away just because business. Yeah. I understand business is hard, but you don't get to be a bad dad or a bad husband because business is hard, you mm, know? That's good. And see that right there. So I tell every, everybody watching this number one, if you guys aren't following Ryan Pineda, make sure you go follow him on Instagram. Number two he runs big events or every quarter they're called wealth con. They're super cool. You can DM them and say, how can I get a ticket to wealth con? There we go. Vegas. We're going to get you. We're going to get you the next one too. Yeah. I'm game. Wherever Let's he do wants it. me, I'll be there. He's my brother. He's killing it. He does big things. I, I, I always find people and we may not see each other, 
but when we see each other, we're like, oh man, I've been watching you. I see what you're doing. I see the way that you care about people. I see the way you're running with your family. I see how you're, you're doing what you said you were going to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I love <laughs> is that in three years, okay, I know you're still going to exist. In three years, I know your business is going to be bigger than ever. In three years, I know there's going to be raging fans running around, and they're saying that you, because of what you did, because of the way you believe, because of the way you operated, changed their life. Mm-hmm. But I meet a lot of people that I don't think will be around in three years. Mm. And I think maybe they did good this year, but I can tell that the way that they're running, they're learning to make money, customer service is going to go in the trash can, and just eventually they're no longer going to exist. Yeah. Because you don't get to decide what you're worth. The market decides what you're worth. You don't get to decide. Yeah. You can believe what you're worth, <laughs> but the market ultimately will pay you what they believe that you're worth. Mm-hmm. And as you continue to be good to your wife, as you continue to take her advice, as you continue to do what's right, as you continue to believe in God, you have a big God. That means we can all have big lives, including everybody watching this. It's there for all of us. It's like, dude, like this is the key. He is truly living out human excellence. And as he finds holes, every year you're developing out. There may have been a 2020 Ryan Pineda and he was a jerk. Yeah. And then 2021, there may have been a judgmental Ryan. Yeah. In 2022, there may have been, if you don't do this, I'm going to get mad and you're fired. And now you're more loving. Each year we evolve into being a better leader for better people. And we start to understand that our fate is going to evolve around people. Yeah. So we got to be better leaders. Um, you want, when you make mistakes, people to be patient with you. Mm-hmm. I also have to be patient with people. Yep. And he asked me a question downstairs. He said, what do you do when someone isn't getting up to speed fast enough? And I said, well, as long as they're holding to the standards that they promised when they started here, I'll be as patient as I can for, I'll be, I'll be with them forever because me being around great people is good for me. Yeah. It's good for my soul. And if they don't produce a lot of revenue, it's okay. It's good for my soul to be around them. Dude, I have some guys in our company that don't make the most money, but when my, I'll ask my son, I'll say, who's, who's your favorite guy at the office? It's the guy making the least amount of money. Mm. He always makes time to go into the gym with my son. Yeah. He always makes time. When my wife pulls up, he runs out and grabs her bags and helps her to the office. Yeah. I love it. It's priceless. Mm. Are you kidding me? Like, like sometimes these people that are the lower rev earners, these people are the greatest people for company culture. And by the way, this dude, his customer service is through the roof. He may not sell as much. He doesn't sell as many, but dude, everybody who he does Everyone business with, him. they love him. He never has an issue. And so my deal is, is that like, look, I'm going to have some of those. But at the end of the day, I just think that our job is you're going to be around for 10 years. 20 years, 30 years, as long as you want to stay in this game. I think social media is going to be around for a very long time. I think there's a lot of fake people coming out now. Uh, They learn a quote that someone else said. They think if they repeat it on their channel and then put emojis and captions, (laughs) they're going to blow up, right? (laughs) You see what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then then they're repeating or they're doing the trending news every day and they're hoping it will catch a trend. Look, dude, I'm not in that. You have an ideology. You have a belief system. And I think that more that you just keep sharing it out there, it's enabled you to have a good life. Your culture of your family's great. Your personal life's great. Your business life's great. People love it. They just want to know, dude, give me the blueprint. And every day you give it away for free. Mm -hmm. Online, you give it away for free. Every day you give it away for free. People should already be sold at this point that they need to come do a live training with you. They need to get closer to you. They need to do that stuff because I believe proximity is power. Every time we're close, I can watch your social media content and I get value out of it. And I'm like, oh, I'm I'm gonna do better day because of that. But now I'm like, dude, I watch that guy for 15 seconds, right? Like, wouldn't it be cool to get in a room with him for a day? This is what people have to take time to self-develop. They have to take time out of their life. Yeah. If you want a new life, you have to give up your old one. It's just the way it works. It's so, the way it works. But, man, I appreciate hey, you, bro. Yeah, appreciate I mean you it. having me, man. Yeah. means a lot, dude. Yeah. I learned a ton today. And like you said, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it, it's a $100 million idea. Yeah. When I went down to Patrick Bet David's event, I go down to the vault every yep. year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it's three days. Dude, it's like, dude, it's like this is so long. You know, and uh, it's just, it's just, it's really hard for me to get away. But the dude delivers a lot of really good information, and it's like every year. And, and I heard a buddy the other day. He goes, "Dude, but the content he gets, he does a vault book one, vault book two, vault book three. He goes, it's really the same stuff he gave away three years ago." I said, "Bro, listen, 
I was different three years ago. The different way I received information differently. If I went to an, an event that you put on in 2020 and I went back in 2024 and it was the same event, Ryan, yeah. you delivered the same information and nothing changed, bro, I'm different. <laughs> yeah. So the way I receive that information now, like when you read the Bible, you know, what did it mean back then? Yeah. What does the it Bible mean hasn't now? changed. <laughs> what does it mean to you? Like, like the yeah. Bible never changes. Yeah. They don't keep updating the version each year to make you a better person. When you read it, you're different so you can understand it better. Amen. So like, as I watch training now, I'm like, dude, I'm totally on a new page now. Now I get why he said that. Now I understand why he did that. In 2020, he was showing some scenarios of how to handle employees. And honestly, I was like, I don't agree with that because dude, I was so immature. Yeah. But now this last year watching it, I was like, oh man, like, dude, it was the same example. Right. And I'm like, I get it now. Yeah. Like I understand, like I'm maturing. And by the way, this is a, this is a secret. I'll self-develop everybody and out mature everybody. Yeah. And you're really mature. Like mm. that's what I, I think your secret to winning is that you're really mature. Mm. I think that you've out matured a lot of people. Mm. And I think a lot of people, they don't mature very fast. Yeah. So they start out, but if you out mature everybody, dude, you're going to beat everybody. I tell my sales team, I'm like, dude, we're going to out mature everybody. Mm. Okay. Like that's how I've we're never heard run. anyone say that. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. It's like, dude, we're just going to be out wisdom them. Yeah. You know, if I do this and it isn't good, then I'm not going to do that anymore. We're going to get mature. Yeah. You know, if, if we did that and that didn't work, we're not going to do it again. We're going to get mature. Yeah. You know, and we're going to look for advice and remember winners love criticism. Losers hate it. Hmm. Losers think you're picking on them and winners are like, dude, thank you so much. You just gave me an opportunity to grow. Yeah. And so like, anyways, anybody that uh, watched this whole thing, you guys are the one percenters. We appreciate you. You know, he wasn't even supposed to do a podcast with me today, but I'm like, dude, he's in Scottsdale. He's down here. He's going to play golf. No, I'm no, like, dude, I'm we got to get together. I'm excited. And then we're like, it's going to be 20 minutes. It's probably 45 minutes now. <laughs> it's the five, it's a five minute close. Hey, Mr. Customer, you know, can I get five minutes? <laughs> I only need five. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but it's totally worth it, man. So yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Much love, bro. Love you, bro. And, appreciate uh, make sure you, man. you guys go follow him, hit him up. If you guys want to get close to him, have a blessed day. See you guys next time. Peace. Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.